very, very simple. We can now hear the signal coming through. You hear that? What's going on you guys? Thanks for joining me here today. Don't forget to subscribe down below, leave a like and comment. I'm going to be elaborating on Bear Vid's video on YouTube. You can go to his channel, check out his video on the clipping of the amplifier using speakers. And that's what we're going to be doing today, but I'm doing an in-car demonstration to give you a little bit more realistic experience and kind of cover maybe some of the things that were asked in the comments section to help out. So check this out. I've got a couple different drivers here. I've got a four ohm Sony driver. I've got a little tweeter here and I've got a two ohm speaker. So I tried out different speakers to see which one was generating maybe a louder sound or if it changed. They all produce the same tone at the same time when using these non-polarized capacitors. Now I've got a Sky, this is a Sky brand, 250 volt, 3.3 farad capacitor. And this guy, I just plugged it right in, in series to the unit here, just like so. And the signal comes through nice and clean on each speaker. However, using the larger driver on this mid-bass speaker, it was noticeably louder than using a tweeter and using this, which I find useful for when you're trying to detect clipping because you want that early signal, you want it to come through nice and clean and loud. So I do recommend using a driver that's a little bit bigger. Now I'm running my subs at two ohms. I tried a two ohm driver and I tried a four ohm driver and there's really no difference. So in my experience, that's what I ended up finding. So what are you gonna need to get the job done? Well, I tried out all these different impedances of speakers, different sizes, different tweeters. I tried subwoofers. They all came in at the same time, so it doesn't appear to me to matter. But my personal choice was a large mid bass driver with a sizable magnet. And this one's a 5.25 inch speaker and it's definitely like 20 years old, but it works out great. I've also got this Sky. I recommend the Sky brand. This one is a non-polarized 3.3 farad, 250 volt capacitor, if you can see that there. It comes in a pack of two for around $8 on eBay, so not bad. The reason I chose the higher voltage was because I was nearing 10,000 watts capability in the trunk, and I wanted to make sure the capacitor would hold up and not get messed up in the process. If you're doing over that, I'd probably recommend getting a larger capacitor. And I also recommend getting some lengthy cable to run from the back of your vehicle to the front of the vehicle. Remember, we're doing this to save money because we're on a budget, guys. That's right. <laughs> so take a look. Here I've got some disconnects. This is going to be making it easier to just plug the speaker right in when you're ready to use it. So that way you don't have to screw around with holding your fingers in there or doing things like shorting out your amplifier. You wanna make sure things are nicely connected. If you wanna go the extra mile, you can solder them on there, but it's up to you, it's your equipment. You're going to want to get a wire stripper to cut off a little piece so you can connect your capacitor. The last thing you're gonna need is on your device, you wanna make sure you download a signal tone generator that can put out a clean 40 hertz signal. If you have got an auxiliary jack on your phone or a file you can download to your head unit or a CD with a 40 hertz test tone, whatever produces the clearest 40 hertz signal from your head unit to your amplifier is what you're gonna want. For my case, I'm going to be using the 40 hertz test tone through a Bluetooth signal because that is what I'm going to be listening to the most from my car. And this is because the new head unit I have has a very crisp Bluetooth signal, which I'm very surprised about. Normally, I plug in through a headphone jack, I use an auxiliary connection, and I run that into the car, or I run an app directly on the head unit itself and then I run that signal to my amplifiers in the back. We're gonna plug this baby in and we'll let you hear the clipping signal running to the speaker up here in the front. And that way you can get exactly what you want from your system. And that's an undistorted 
clean signal that protects your amplifier and your other speakers. All right, guys, let's go do it. All right, so we're gonna run our minus up into there, clamp that down. That, it's in there nice and snug. So we're gonna go ahead and strip that down. Okay, we've got our connection. And this guy up into our plus there. Pushing that up into there. Uh, I wish I had like a gimbal or some. Oh, got it. Okay, cool. So we've got our wire here, the lengthy wire I was telling you about. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna run your lengthy wire all the way up to the front of your vehicle so that way you can test your speaker in the front of the car. If you're doing just one amplifier, then go ahead and just plug these into the one amplifier. I'm using two amplifiers right now, so that's why you see all these extra connections, but our positive output is coming from here, these two, and our minus output is coming from over here, these two. I know it looked like a complicated mess. Trust me, it is a complicated mess, but all you need to know is that the plus and the minus are connected. The two amplifiers are acting as one amplifier, and that's why it looks that way. But wait, there's one last step. We still need to connect our capacitor. So I cut this little piece of wire off so that I could trim it and put it into this unit. So just to show you that here, I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna disconnect our plus. We're gonna take a nice little lengthy piece out here. So you can see that little piece. And we're gonna strip it down. I need to vacuum my car now. Okay, so we got our little piece here, perfect. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim this side off. So we've got the two now, we've got our wires here. Plug this piece back in here so you can see that. So this is our missing link. And the missing link fills in the capacitor as tightly as we can. You could take this to the next step and solder them in. You could probably butt splice them in. You could do this several different ways, but at least you've got a solid connection now between this piece here and this piece here. And that's really what's gonna matter when you're turning up your amplifier. You don't want this connection to be loose. Very, very simple. We can now hear the signal coming through. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run a 40 Hertz test tone through this. So we're gonna turn the vehicle on first. We got our voltage coming up here. See our voltage down there. To turn the app on and move to the next step. You need to make sure that your boost on your remote is set to max. Okay, so now that we've found the maximum volume that we're gonna listen to our music at, now we can go ahead and set the gain on the amplifier after listening to the 40 hertz tone. So we're gonna do that next. Now I've got my 40 hertz tone playing through the Bluetooth channel. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna turn this up I've got no sound coming from the speaker yet, but it is moving a little bit. We're gonna come back here to our master amplifier and we're gonna set level right here. You hear that? And right there is our clipped signal. It's looking good. So it worked out perfectly, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe today, and share this video. And, you know, please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hopefully you find these capacitors to be a good deal for you. We got the new subwoofers in. Okay, these things weigh, these things weigh about, you know, like 65 pounds each. The batteries are jumping up and down. 